What's up guys and welcome to today's video. In today's video you get to hear from a uh, passionate and opinionated Will, um, which is always fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Today I'm talking about ballast songs and why they should be more expensive. Which is a weird take, I know, right? Like, what am I talking about? Well, I'm not talking about ballast songs in general. I'm talking about a very specific thing here. What I'm talking about is these. Uh, boutique, like, you know, custom-made, single-origin ballast songs. Ballast songs that are made by one single person somewhere who worked really hard to make it and spent a bunch of time doing that. Um, that's the kind of ballast song that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Squint Industries or Glider Co. or The One in China or anything like that. Though I do have a video talking about why ballast songs are expensive in the first place and the difference between, you know, ballast songs that are super cheap, like the ones you can get from China, and the reason that those are so cheap compared to, like, Squid Industries and Glider Co. and companies like that. Um, at the end of the day, it all boils down to economies of scale and whatever, but that's beside the point here. Uh, the point that I'm getting at is stuff like this. This is my Stitch Steel Alien. I've talked about it many times before, and it cost me $750, right? And that's a pretty penny for a knife. That is an expensive knife, I think, by anyone's metric. $750 is a lot to spend on a knife. However, it should have cost more. That's right, it should have cost substantially more, in my opinion. And the reason for that is, honestly, it just comes down to the math of it all. If you think about it, this knife costs $750. And on the second-hand market, I've seen Stitch Steel Aliens go for upwards of $1,600 uh, second-hand, right? Like, easily I've seen people sell them for more than $1,600 a piece, which is, which is craziness. You know, that's the difference between $750 and $1,600. That's more than double the price of a base Alien. Um, but if you think about the base price of an alien, what you'll realize is actually, for what you're getting, it's crazy cheap. Like, if you consider it, $750, I actually talked to Stitch about this, and I asked him, how long do you spend making one alien, right? How many hours of your life do you spend making a single alien? And he said that it takes him approximately 60 hours to make any one of these knives. And that's crazy, right? Like, if you do the math there, if you, if you look into that, you'll realize that $750 divided by 60 hours of labor is $12.50 an hour, which is barely minimum wage in some parts of the country, and definitely not what an artisan craftsman should be making for something like this, right? So, like, that's a big problem. That's, that's very little money you know, like, you can't live off of $12.50 an hour in most places in the United States. So the idea that he is only charging $12.50 an hour for his own time to make a product like this, which requires years of training and skill to accomplish, is crazy to me. And it kind of sucks that he feels like $750 is the price that he has to charge to, like, you know, be, uh competitive or to like for people to accept it right you know like people are like oh yeah that's an expensive knife you know it's it's worth 750 dollars but it's damn that's a pretty penny and it's like actually it should be worth a lot more than that if you consider it like stitch should be making at least 20 dollars an hour on his products if not more than that because he's a skilled craftsman who has spent such a long time learning and honing his skills to create something as beautiful and as good as this and like the fact that we're paying him less than minimum wage sucks that sucks right like i don't know do you do you see what i'm getting at here like people like um you can get a uh, an ex10 right ex10s i believe knew for a while the price of those was like 450 dollars and i know for a fact that there is more than 450 dollars worth of work that goes into that kind of knife right like there's no way that you're producing that in a capacity uh, where you're, you know, everybody involved in the production of that knife is making a proper 
uh, amount of money off of it if you're only selling it for $450, especially when the secondary market value of that knife is upwards of $1,200. You know, I've seen EX10s go for $900, bucks. i have seen them go for $1,200, bucks. i have seen them go for almost $2,000 a pop, which is so much stinking money compared to the initial investment. And so that's kind of the problem that I wanted to just talk about today and, and put on people's radar is like, yeah, I get it, you know, especially for most people, ballast songs are really expensive. Um, but that is the whole reason that companies like uh, Squid Industries exists. Squid Industries operates on a scale completely outside of that of anybody making boutique knives like this, right? They have a whole team of people um, that are, you know, in a whole operations base where they're creating knives, utilizing the machinery that they have, um, and they are paying people what they're worth, but they're able to put out so many more products that it's easier for them to price them in a way that it is competitive in the market and that more people can get their hands on it. And then similarly with the one off in China, I mean, I don't fully support their practices. The cloning thing is only part of the problem there. The real problem there is that in China, the way that they're able to make something like the Falcon for $40 a piece, right, is that they have the economies of scale. In China, there is just such an incredible uh, economic factor in terms of manufacturing. There are factories all over the place and they have tons and tons and tons of machines. So you can put in an order, say you were producing the Falcon, you can put in, put in an order for like 2,500 handles and get all of those done for around what five thousand dollars which is a tiny investment per handle and if you consider the amount of uh, workers that they utilize in that period most of those workers are making well below minimum wage they're making very very little off of the work that's being done so at the end of the day those kind of products are not really sustainable because you're not really paying people properly for the work that's being done or you know the products that's being created um, but at least at Squid Industries, I know that they're paying people properly to live in California, so that's good. Um, but yeah, what I'm getting at here is like, should somebody who is a single maker have to exist in this world of where if they feel like they charge more for their knives, suddenly they're not going to sell. And I think one of the biggest examples of this for me, uh, one of the people that really got me thinking about this was JK Designs, right? Uh, Julian Klein. And um, Julian is known for having relatively expensive knives new in the industry. When you buy them new from Julian, they have a high market value, usually $1,100 to $1,200 new. And that, of course, sounds like a lot of money. You know, it's like, oh, wow, that's a really expensive thing from him. But really, he's one of the only people charging what he's actually worth, right? He's one of the only people currently charging something that, you know, will get him a fair amount back on his investment as a person manufacturing uh, ballast songs. And I think that is super important to consider. It's like Julian, yeah, sure, you can say, oh, he's overcharging for his knives. But when you break down the math of the amount of work put into each of these knives, what's really happening is the community as a whole, almost all of the boutique makers are really hyper undercharging. You know, they're, they're trying to get their products out there in the hands of more people, which is always great, but at what detriment, you know? It, you can't uh, have a, like, really nice living and, a, and pay for your family and everything off of less than minimum wage. Like, that's that sucks. And I, and I hate that that's become kind of the meta that people just have to live with, if that makes sense. I don't know. This is just something that I'm really passionate about in a way. Is like, I believe that people deserve to be paid, you know, what they are worth. And the people making these products, the people that are the driving force behind the Balasong community outside of um, mass production uh, facilities, you know, these boutique knives that really are the uh, artisanal backbone of the community, the makers behind them deserve to be paid fairly. Um... So yeah, that's that's kind of my spiel for now. But I I implore uh, makers, manufacturers, you know, people that are making their knives. Um, if you can, I highly encourage you to take a look at the prices that you're charging for your knives and see how many hours you're putting into each knife, and really consider if you should up the price of your knives. Because personally, I think there's multiple makers out there who are making incredible products that really deserve to be making more money because people will pay it. That's why the secondary market exists and you've seen people pay so much for it. And so at the end of the day, you deserve to be making 
what other people are making. Like, everybody deserves to be making, you know, th this knife, right? This knife is no lesser than a JK Designs Orca. You know, the, the Orca is a beautiful knife, and this is a beautiful knife, and both of them take a different amount of work in a different way, but this is a fully handmade work of art, and you cannot tell me that this is somehow worth less than an Orca. And yet, it's sold for a substantially lower price. And I don't believe it's because the Orca is overpriced. I believe it's because this is severely underpriced. I believe that Stitch should be charging more for this because this is a work of art and he deserves to be paid for that art. Similarly, I think that the community members as a whole, if you have the money to buy something like this and you have potentially excess money, please, dear God, consider spending that and tipping the people that are manufacturing these knives for you. You know, if you are doing a custom order, please consider tipping the person um, to help, you know, make up for the losses in terms of the cost of manufacturing because you really have to consider when it's a single person making something like this, it is expensive to live that way. It is so expensive. So, yeah, I just, I implore the community, you know, you guys have to really take into account the idea that knives are not cheap to make and people's lives are worth so much more than this. You know, we're taking hours and hours of people's lives and paying them very little for what ends up being this work of art that we then resell for more than double the original uh, value that was you know, given to us from this, you know, we're given a crazy deal. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to resell this for 1600 bucks and, you know, make a nice little profit off of that. And Stitch doesn't see that profit at all. And Stitch is the one that deserves the profit because he's the one who put the freaking work in to make this beautiful work of art. So... Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I see a lot of comments about, you know, how, oh, all these knives are so expensive and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yes, they are, right? Um, but the thing at the end of the day is there are companies that exist to produce cheaper knives that have the setups to produce cheaper knives. And they exist for people that can't afford stuff like this. But I firmly believe that not everybody should be able to afford stuff like this because if everybody could then the person making it wouldn't be able to make them anymore right they'd be pricing it so low that they would be losing money on every single sale right i don't know how much the equipment that stitch uh you know has purchased to make these i don't know how much that costs i don't know how much uh it costs for him to buy food for him and his family i don't know how much his mortgage payment is you know but i can assume that by making twelve dollars and fifty cents an hour making these and that being your primary job that's still probably not the best thing in the world you know that's not a great place to be and personally I believe that they deserve to be paid so much better for that so yeah that's that's just my two cents on this weird issue but I genuinely believe that boutique knives you know high quality knives like this should cost more because people deserve to be paid for their work fairly um, and yeah that's that's kind of my opinion there so yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this one. It was a bit of a rant, bit of a ramble. I'm 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 passionate about this. Uh, I'm gonna be making a video soon on uh, not necessarily the price of knives, but like the evolution of balisongs, like how they used to be versus how they are now, um, to hopefully give people a little more context in terms of like you know the balisong market now compared to how it used to be. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'll be uh, getting on to. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and um, treat people good and pay your makers fairly. Thanks. Peace.